Good evening and welcome. My name is Alex Klein, the Dorothy and Stephen R. Weber Curator uh, here at ICA in Philadelphia. Uh, we are tuning in from several different time zones this evening. Uh, we've got Na Kim coming in from Berlin and Adele Node Santos coming in from Somerville, uh, Massachusetts. So uh, it's really just such a pleasure and an honor to um, have you both together uh, and a real feat for us to be able to orchestrate this this evening. Um, I'm gonna give a quick introduction so that we can dive right into it. Um, Adele Node Santos uh, is currently the professor post-tenure of architecture and urban planning at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and previously Dean of the School of Architecture and Planning from 2004 to 2014. During her tenure as Dean, she founded the Leventhal Center for Advanced Urbanism, an important think tank on urban futures. And after her tenure as Dean, she became its co-director for two years. Prior to her work at MIT, she's held appointments at UC Berkeley and I should mention that she's also the former chair of our Department of Architecture and the Stuart Wiseman School of Design here at the University of Pennsylvania. She's principal architect um, in the San Francisco Somerville based firm Santos Prescott and Associates and her awards and recognitions and numerous buildings are really just too many to list here. But I'd be remiss if I did not mention that she is the architect and creative vision behind ICA's own building. Uh, which is certainly one of the, the reasons we were very eager to bring her uh, into conversation with Na Kim this evening. Na Kim is a conceptually driven graphic designer who works between Seoul and Berlin. Known for her bold use of colors, shapes, and patterns inspired by everyday life, her work often expands beyond the page and into the creation of dynamic installations and environments. Na Kim studied with legendary Dutch designer Karl Martens at the Werkplatz Typography and since 2016 has been a member of the Alliance Graphique Internationale. From 2009 to 2011, she was responsible for the concept and design of Graphic Magazine, which is where I first encountered her work, and has exhibited her work at venues including MMCA and SEMA in Seoul, MoMA in New York, the Triennale in Milano, and she is currently at work uh, as the creative lead for the exhibition design for the V&A in London's Hallyu, the Korean Wave, opening in September 2022, which I'm really anxious to see and sounds like a very ambitious project, uh, merging so many of your, your skill sets uh, and interests together in one place. Um, Na is the inaugural commission of ICA's new Outside In series produced in collaboration with the incredible forward-thinking textile company Maharam, and so I would also just love to give a note of thanks to Maharam for their close work with us on this project. It just would not have been possible without them. And I think that it'll be very evident um, how crucial uh, everyone's uh, collaboration was in realizing this project as we move through tonight's conversation. So um, before I hand it over to Na and Adele, I just want to reiterate that this is truly a, a dream for us to have organized this conversation. It was something that Na and I uh, kind of bounced around really early on when we, we first started working together. Do you think we could get Adele to come and join us and participate in this? Um, because Adele, you really, uh, unbeknownst to you, you've actually been a collaborator of ours throughout this whole process. Uh, so, you know, Nas installation is very much a love letter to the building and um, was very much in dialogue with you from afar. So, uh, it's just wonderful to actually be able to realize um, this conversation uh, in in real life, even if even if virtually. So, uh, and then also maybe just on a personal note, um, I've been a curator at ICA for now over a decade, and I just want to attest to how much we love working in your galleries, Adele. They are truly a joy. Every curator that has come through ICA in my time there has always talked about uh, what a pleasure it is. Uh, to work in the space. It, you've designed such a uh, responsive system that has allowed for so many incredible things to happen over the years. Uh, and it's really uh, because of your building that we are able to do the work that we do at ICA. So a thank you from me and from everyone uh, at ICA uh, for your vision, uh, for a building that I think continues to, to grow and uh, give back in, in unexpected ways. So to start us off, I want to plant the seed about some possible intersections between both of your practices. Uh, 
graphic design is often thought of as a, you know, maybe a flat two-dimensional form in architecture, something that's spatialized. But what we found in this project is very much uh, the intersections between the two and maybe even the opposite scenario. So with Na, a kind of a graphic project that is realized spatially, uh, and with, with Adele, uh, a process that maybe begins in the two-dimensional. So um, working virtually with Na, um, we were really looking through your archival images, thinking, experiencing uh, your building from a two-dimensional perspective. So I, I'm really curious to kind of think together about uh, this question of the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional. And, you know, in some ways, how maybe Na's installation allows us to see uh, your building uh, anew in different ways. So uh, let's maybe dive right in and, and um, Na, Na and Adele, maybe you'd like to, to take a look at uh, the installation and maybe we can take a walk through together. Well, I mean, like maybe if I start uh, first about like maybe some kind of uh, first feeling about this project when I got invitation, then I, I was really into the idea of ICA it, itself first, because that's like um, institution for contemporary art that's just like, you know, like it means everything, but also it's very kind of ambiguous in the same time. So which I, I feel really uh, interested in. And then it has, uh, ICA is located in many other places, not only Philadelphia. So I, I, I was like more into the naming itself in first and then start thinking about what is the special ideas about the ICA Philadelphia and then what maybe the architect itself is could be the very important factor in my research. And then yeah, obviously then I, I, I was thinking, when I'm thinking about the architect, then I just get to know Adele and then her amazing work and then her like website was luckily have very like well archived all the project and then all these images and then models and everything that was quite impressive and then almost feels like I'm looking at the like uh, old family album that may be presented to like, uh, like well uh, presented to everyone. So yeah, if you see this uh, installation at the moment that the first image was, uh, is that like uh, uh, the view uh, from outside. And obviously that will start from this ramp space. And um, it has uh, like the, from the outside of view, the glass window is very important and then of course through this window you can see a lot of indoor spaces together and i think uh in the first um because i'm i couldn't really visit the spot and i have no chance to just looking at the space in rear so i just look at the images over and over again and then of course uh Adele's archive was really helpful and then try to find my own way to experience the space. And then, yeah, maybe we can just keep looking at the installation images first. This is like some view in the Robbie place and then other some uh, extra spaces. And I really like to have some uh, ideas that like covering up uh, the installation can covering up the spaces because uh, I was thinking that like uh, together with the others idea about the IC building, I thought that some social conscious was quite important factor for the building itself. And I tried to find some installation which can cover um, the, the spaces in a kind of equally uh, treated like, and then maybe then the gallery spaces or multi-purpose spaces can be treated in the, in the same way, then I can have some uh, like, it can be connected with the idea that maybe this ICA building have, have uh, taken the space in between the university and the city spaces as well. So that's uh, one idea that I try to um, use the, the other extra spaces, not only ramp area or exhibition, the, the, the uh, uh, center that's an exhibition spaces. And 
And then uh, on top of that, by researching these spaces that I, of course, I fall in love with this, the idea about the space in a, from others uh, architect, because uh, many things, many spaces are facing each other, then I could find some singular idea that maybe the space is connected with the horizontal um, uh, connection. That means the elevation is quite important. I mean, in my opinion. So I try to highlighting that part. So maybe that I can wrapping this space with uh, by the tracing the, um, the horizontal line around the buildings, I mean, including inside the spaces. So that kind of, uh, that was somehow like start point and try trying out. And I was really curious about like how um, basically that how this building can be changed by my design and then from other your opinion. So maybe we can just start conversation from this way. Okay, I think the amazing thing about your installation is that you never went to the building. You actually completely accurately understood the space. And I never thought that the grid of the composite material that covers this, uh, the facades would actually be a marker, but in fact, that gave you a grid on the outside. So then you could dimensionally understand this from a, from a kind of, uh, a, a, from, at least from a measured dynamic, okay? And I think uh, what you, you got involved with from the very beginning, and this is the most fun part for me of the building, is the ramp that goes from the lower level to the upper level. And I put it on the outside because, you know, museum spaces are black boxes. And here we are on a campus. We great for people to see action from the outside. And uh, like many of, of the ins people who made installations, that wall to the ramp then became a picture window to give a clue as to what was happening on the inside. And actually, I think the, uh, that facade with, the, with, with that window and, and the logo of ICA, and then when we get into your, your graphics, you'll show us some of them, you know, you just pinpointed the right moments where inside and outside could meet each other, you know. Um, and the lobby was more obvious, but the, but the ramp was the sort of gave me a clue that something really amazing was happening on the inside. And, uh, and suddenly a building kind of became very lively, I think, you know, um, uh, because of this sort of interface. And the, it's not just that you could see people strolling up and down. Back of that was your graphics, you know, and then the threads, you, you, you have these different colors, which had different meanings, but they, you, you trace them from the outside, you can see what's going on. Um, so, you know, it, it's very charming at one level and kind of startling as well at the same time, yeah. Oh, I see, you see, this is, this is an important one to bring forward as I'm having this conversation with Nara, because you can begin to see the dynamic of that ramp. And then you've got some other pictures actually, it shows people walking up and down the ramp, which is really great. And, you know, it's quirky. I mean, this is kind of was a quirky moment. And I thought, wow, this actually starts to work very well in the building. But the fact that now has picked up on this and the graphics, you see, you see the square window. That's actually the show off place. That's where we expected everybody to advertise what was in there. Right. But um, and it doesn't matter. It still works, you know, but that's a point in your composition that you when you actually when you go through the process of showing how you went about it. This image actually translated into your graphic is really fabulous, actually. Yeah. Thanks, Adele. But in the same time, the, I totally agree that this ramp space is very special in ICA building. And then initially, the ICA and Alex approached me to do something in the ramp space. And then maybe we tried to make some uh, kind of naming from that ramp as well. And then I was thinking to do something that space, of course, is very symbolic. You can see the, the, the very um, special space from outside and also the inside is connecting different uh, exhibition spaces. And then and maybe that's kind of uh, like extra air that brings into the, the in-between exhibition space, et cetera. So I thought that space itself is very attractive so I try to find a kind of different experience in this area, but then, then, then obviously I just need to check the, the floor plan and the elevation of your building. 
and I realized I really find find out like I was really amazed that like that spaces are connected even inside the exhibition spaces the late uh, elevation is quite complicated but at the same time that makes big attraction of the space and I really curious about the uh, the view installation view of the exhibition as well because it's such a nice uh, way of making the space as a kind of exhibition space. So then, then everything is started from this elevation uh, that that you made for this uh, for this ICA building. Oh, I think what was wonderful, I, I think, uh, now was the fact you made a decision to do the whole building, not just a piece of it. <laughs> you know, because that was inevitable once you started this motif. Of course, you went to the corner, which is the entrance, and then of course you went up onto the onto what will be the future garden, etc. It, it, it really important, and it was sort of like, and even a little staircase going up to a, an overlock higher up. I mean, so I mean, this is really essential that you you boldly said, "Look, I'm going to do it all." Right? Yeah, at first maybe maybe that must be a little bit too ambitious for me. <laughs> no, it works. Yeah. No, I really want to amplify that. I think you know it really uh, you know brought the dynamism of the building uh, to life. I mean, you really feel your body differently. You experience the architecture in a different way. And um, you know, Adele, it's it. I think we all noticed hidden. I think you know, Nav. Early on, you said you wanted to bring to life the hidden character of the building, and I think you were <laughs> incredibly successful because mm -hmm. even in this view that's up now, you can really see the different depths of the building that I don't think you always uh, notice on a habitual day-to-day -day level. Um, you know, so I, I'm eager for you to see it in person, Adele, and see if there's th new things that you would notice about your own design. But I wonder if this is also a moment for us to take a step back out and, um, you know, maybe uh, hear a little bit from you, Adele, about, about your initial design process behind the building and vision for the space. Uh, and maybe you can give us some juicy background on, <laughs> on the history uh, of, of how ICA came to be. Um, okay, well, you know, first of all, it was fast track. I was like, okay, what does that mean? They said, well, you have to, you have to come with a builder. Somebody who's gonna build the building too. And we have to have, we have to make it habitable in nine months flat or something completely ridiculous because we've got a show that's gonna open. And I took a deep breath and actually the, the, the site itself, was the handicapped ramp to the dormitory building that, that joins it on the site, which is like, wow, <laughs> you expect us honestly to make some sense out of this. And um, I actually kind of almost designed the building before I had the interview because I had to think through this thing really quickly. So I made some conceptual diagrams, which actually Nas saw. And, you know, in, in a funny way, it was one of those projects where the site was so impossible that there weren't any obvious choices. Like we had a narrow street that was quite pedestrian oriented, which is definitely a campus street. And crossing it was a really a public road. And at the intersection was clearly where you had to come in. There was no, no other possibility, okay. And then um, gallery, well, that of course was, you know, big spaces, where was the big spaces? And that was actually where the handicap ramp had been, right? <laughs> That's another whole story. And then it, there was a whole section of this building it could only be one floor, floor high because the dormitory literally was the edge of the building with its windows. So we decided, well, gosh, we needed the underneath part for um, you know, spaces for workspaces and loading dock and everything else. And then above it was it clearly going to be a garden. You know? Now, of course, there was never enough money. And that's part of the problem of doing the fast track because actually you know, you're in charge of the design, but the, the most important person is the cost consultant who said, oh, no, 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 you can't have such a big glass. You can't have this. money, 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 money. And, uh, but, you know, once we made a decision, that was it. I mean, there was no going backwards and forwards and so on. So it was a very, it was a fun process. So we had a really good team from the ICA side um, who were extremely encouraging and uh, we worked fast. We had no choice. Um, so that's just the beginning of it, yeah. And then the other thing is a Penn campus. So on any buildings that really ask you to come in from the street, you know, they're brick buildings, they're fairly formidable, honestly. And here we had a building where you, you said, please come in, right? So we had to animate the outside to bring you to the inside. And so the lobby space in particular was really important uh, along uh, leading you to, to, and actually you worked with that very nicely too, because your lines took people up and through to the, to the garden and, um, 
So you know, it was an uncommon building for the campus. And then finally we went through review process of having to have the okay to go ahead. And um, of course the tr trustee said, not brick? I said, of course not, this is a contemporary art building. <laughs> and it was lots of to and fro on the subject. And funny, they, they get, they, clearly they weren't going to move me at all because this was, <laughs> besides the fast track, we, we wanted it to be a modern building, obviously it had to be with modern materials and so, so on and so on. So we actually made the base out of limestone, you know, as a kind of gesture to the campus. But we let people see in and walk in, actually, and that was really an important part of the, the story. And how long was the process, Adele? I'm curious. What, well, I think it was probably you... nine months from beginning to, to, to. Wow. No, no, we designed it. We designed it in weeks, honestly. And then the construction documents, and then we had to get it through. And then the, I, 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 may, be, I may be wrong, but it was something abnormal. Let's put it this way. Very. Adele, you had this great anecdote about how you, you arrived to the design meeting and you had it, you had it designed the, and you had, it, you had your drawing with you. So yes, I did. maybe this is a nice entree to, to talk about how uh, your process. Do you have process. those diagrams? Do you have those crazy diagrams? Oh yeah, you've got some of them, I can see. So yes, no, I kind of, you know, what do you do? You, you're going to an interview, you know, this is fast track. You know? And I just, you know, I, I looked at the site, I looked at this handicapped ramp, I thought, oh my God. I, I should come in with an idea because they need to know what in this very quick period of time we were able to do. So I started the process and got them engaged in these diagrams, you know, and of course, immediately I got the job because, you know, they're already walking around in the space mentally, you know, so, uh, and that, that was really fun. I, I've never done that again, by the way, PS, it's not my normal tactic, but, but in this case, you know, I was actually chairman of architecture, so I had, had some status on the campus and, uh, you know, people knew me. So, um, and of course I knew that site pretty well, yeah. Yeah, this diagram really needs to understand the building very well. I mean, without visiting actually for me, especially. You can really see the wayfinding and the structure. This is a kind of, this is actually why, I, how I present my work in general, by the way. I like to experience what the space will be and then I can kind of, in these little vignettes, etc., so people actually lay, lay people can understand, uh, you know, uh, what the third thought process was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, as Alex mentioned, that it's really interesting to see the two dimensional uh, diagram from architect. Then I often try to present my two two dimensional into the space. I mean, for me, that is kind of uh, kind of like mixture in the same time, but it's quite amazed to, to amazing to see that from the from your drawing, I think. That's, that's great. Well, this is where we it was one of the interfaces of realizing, you know, in a way, right, although you may be dealing with flat surfaces, you're actually creating in through the process, a three dimensional experience, actually, which is really important. And I'm just seeing um, the next image that's just come up, but I think this is a wonderful point of contact about how your, um, maybe your processes have come together through drawing. And, um, and now I'm just, I'm wondering if you could maybe, uh, you know, maybe walk us through your process and how, how important, I guess, the drawing, Adele's drawings were to your, um, your formation of this, of this wonderful intervention in ICA's building. Yeah, by, so after reviewing uh, Adele's um, diagram or floor plan, et cetera, that I a little bit start to understand the building as a structure. And then I realized that as also Adele mentioned before, the, the square window in the ramp space seems like kind of strong um, statement for me. It's, it's, even looks like some kind of definition of some something like that you want to say, maybe this kind of this window is kind of it interaction from outside and inside. And then also maybe this could be a very good uh, exhibition space, presentation space, but in the same time, people can also sit in, inside and then have some conversation between. So I think this is very um, symbolic place and I, I try to make kind of a start point from that window, actually. And then maybe from that square window, I can extend uh, some sort of pattern or 
this kind of definition toward the space. So uh, this image is the sketches, kind of paper cut sketches of the, the ramp space, especially. And as I mentioned, I tried to focus on the um, uh, horizontal line of the, this, this building. And this hori the, the horizontal line was already defined through the tiles, um, tile units of the facade, uh, where the facade, uh, in the facade spaces. So I, um, and I, I can recognize that almost 20 uh, different tiles in an, in an elevation is exist in, in inside the building, in the building. And I try to make kind of horizontal lines for that. And then if you see the next slide, then, and then this horizontal line can be uh, seen um, in the south part of the building. So it's, it can also cover all around a uh, little bit outside and then also inside the building. And I try to see how it works with the uh, with pattern and units and try to make the, the, this kind of sketch in the paper with the paper cut. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is, that's the good thing. That's a wonderful one. Yeah. That's the, um, so out of this um, research that I make this kind of sort of <laughs> illustration diagram <laughs> diagram and then uh, from this uh, play uh, unit I maybe I define some game out of this uh, diagram then start placing them like maybe I can compare like composing the music in a way that I can pl place the each pattern and the pattern was defined by this uh, square uh, windows of the, the from the ramp space, etc. So, and then from this language, I try to uh, uh, put connect with my own work. And as you can imagine, that like this kind of process is so much um, so much connected with uh, some found uh, structure that like try to get something from the exist material, which is the 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 building uh, architecture um, structure already. And, and then I often try to make, uh, create, not create the find, find some language out of uh, my collection, which is mostly like everyday stuff. And if you go to, to the next slide, then, then the, maybe the main object could be the, some everyday stuff like a stickers and some mass produced stuff, printed material. I, I really like to see them and then collect them because that tells a lot about um, the, um, the, what is the definition, the definition of the basic uh, elements of uh, uh, aesthetic or in colors and shapes and size, etc. So this is kind of, um, uh, very much a uh, start point of my work. And I, I, I thought maybe finding extra unit uh, by using this kind of collection would be a uh, quite interesting challenge in this process. From these collections of found material, I try to define the pattern language from, uh, for this building. And um, as I mentioned that like, the window space, it could be the definition, then I can also uh, add on my definition of the patterns in, in, the, uh, uh, in the building. So the, some selective patterns could be created by the, um, the found material, the stickers pattern, and then that could be extended into uh, um, different composition. So then in the end, together with the color combination. Actually, that colors also come from the, the basic sticker uh, set that I showed you before. And so this sort of lined pattern can be uh, work, can work as a kind of three, um, one by three uh, pattern. And, and then each composition can be placed on the ramp space first. And, 
actually, uh, for me, it's hard to really say what's the, the, the kind of um, rules behind like placing these patterns, etc. But for me, it's like uh, finding some behind rule by uh, placing them into the building would be quite magical process. And it's very important in a way to, you know, like using my intuition uh, from the collections. I might just interject here really quickly because we haven't um, actually mentioned the title of your piece now, which is FFC on 678. And, you know, just really briefly, as, as Na mentioned, um, with the found sticker sheets, FFC is from found composition. And I think one of the things that was really compelling for me is the way that you brought your process of found compositions of design, you know, kind of ready-made design being available in, in everyday life. And you also transpose that onto the building itself. And so in a way, uh, Adele's design for the building becomes one of your found compositions that you're reacting to. And um, so the 678 is also- You never told me that before, yes. Wow. The 678 is actually referring to uh, the, the grids, the number of grids that you're working with because Adele's building has this kind of grid, grid system and pattern that anchors the experience of the building itself. So I just wanted to, to bring attention to that because it was, it was far more than intuitive. There was a real conceptual grounding um, to, and, and direction in your work. And you know, maybe as we go to the next slide, this is also a moment to also just reiterate that Na has actually never had the chance to come to ICA in person. So this entire installation and incredible intervention was done virtually. And I wonder if uh, now you could reflect a little bit about um, how that may have affected your process, um, because even here, these images that are up on the screen are actually renderings that you made and they look like the real thing. And it's incredible. Yeah, they really look like the, the installation shot in the end. And yeah, that was quite, <laughs> it's very simple Photoshop image. Well, I think it's re really nice to see them in real, but because of course I couldn't really be there. And at the same time, I need to, because of that, I need to make the, the game of the rule more clearly. So there is a pattern and even like uh, Alex mentioned that it's sort of intuitive. It's, it's the, the rule behind should be really clear because, because of that, then I can really project these games into the building. So, um the, the basically the spaces are um uh the, the these images are like uh very helpful to imagining the buildings and also if you go to the next slide then the many ICA colleague really helps me to you know like experience this uh, installations uh process because like um, Maharam prepare really perfectly all these uh, sticker sheets and then um, all these uh, units in a big site. And um, Alex and other people helps me one by one when because uh, they in the during the installation they really like FaceTime with me and then see show all these details and if it is right like this way or that way. So uh, even I was not there, I had the feeling that I already seen these spaces strangely, but I really want to visit in here. Yeah, no, it's, I, thank you for the, the reminder too. I mean, we should really give a shout out to our incredible crew at ICA and Paul Swenbeck, chief preparator and uh, assisted by Emily Elliott and the, the, um, the team from ARC who, who was FaceTiming Na live from Berlin, um, you know, with every little decision. So we didn't make any move without Na being involved, but it was all done, you know, virtually. But so you it was pretty incredible. accurate. I mean, it was to the last fraction of an inch, you know, whatever. It just all just worked perfectly, amazing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So uh, something that we wouldn't have been able to achieve, I think, before uh, the advent of this type of technology, right? That's right, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Adele, I, I, before we maybe uh, pull outwards from ICA, I would love to just maybe dive in a little bit more with you. And also, I want to just, um, you know, uplift the fact that uh, I think Na and I were both 
just uh, just really um, excited that it, our building is designed by a female architect. There are not <laughs> a lot of museums out there that uh, can say that. So I think that's something that's a very important aspect of our history um, and something that uh, Na and I spent a lot of time talking about, about the importance of, of female designers. Um, but, you know, sorry, go on, Adele. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, when we, we talked first, I explained that, that, that actually I went to an opening of the show very, very popular. And, uh, you know, there was a wonderful uh, docent, I guess she would be called, taking people around. And then uh, she said, uh, and this building was designed by a woman. And they all went, whoa. And then I stepped forward and said, it's me, <laughs> you know. And it was a fantastic moment, <laughs> everybody <laughs> laughing and shouting. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah. And it was important actually, I think to ICA as well, that they, uh, they hired a, an architectural firm headed by a woman. Absolutely, and I, I think it's 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 a core to our ethos as an institution. So um, I wanted to to make make sure to mention that uh, that it's something that we we talk about a lot and celebrate a lot in our in our history. And um, you know, actually, to that, you know, you talked about the radicality of using glass on campus, and uh, you know, looking through your previous kind of descriptions and correspondence about the building, you talked about wanting to connect the building to the street, to uh, the edge of Penn's campus, but to life on the street. And when we talked the other day, you had this wonderful reflection. I wrote it down. You said a lot of architecture is just about the outside, but mine is about the inside going to the outside. And when we think a lot about, I think, um, you know, art buildings, there's a kind of hermeticism or a way of keeping people feeling like they might be outside of it. But your building is very much about trying to, to bridge those spaces and invite people in or reveal what's going on inside into the outside. And that feels like a very forward thinking thing, especially in this moment when museums are are trying to rethink how they connect with communities and how, how they situate themselves um, you know, vis-a-vis -vis their local constituents uh, and how they invite people in or welcome people. So for me, the way that you constructed the ramp, the lobby, the glass, the terrace with the, the idea of a garden, that feels very uh, ahead of its time, especially, you know, when we opened our doors in the early 90s. So I wondered if, if you could talk a little bit more about um, your, your vision for, for that space and that question of inside and, and outside that also uh, maybe permeates your work? You know, actually, if you look at contemporary museums that have been built, a lot of them are gesticulating wildly, okay? The form on the outside has nothing to do with what happens on the inside, actually. And um, I think I was criticized in the beginning by, you know, it seems like a rather staid building. I mean, it's just formally, you know, there's no hysterics there. And I said, well, <laughs> that's not what my work is about, you know, and it's, really about the transition from the outside to the inside, and then of course the interior spaces and what they are, honestly. And so <clears throat> with very few moves at my uh, disposal, you know, opening up the facade where we could reveal what was going on in the inside was really important. And then when you go up uh, to the second level, there's a kind of a bay window that goes out from the facade and hangs over the street. And this is really important so the people once they were in could look back at the campus because after all, it was a building of the campus. And, you know, they could see people strolling up and down this little street, which was really charming. And there used to be a cafe outside. I don't really know what happened to it. Um, can't trace the history, but you need to have one back there because people used to hang out, you know, in this garden. But you also want to have something to drink and eat, et cetera, et cetera. So there's an opportunity there if there's ever any money to do that. But, um, but most of my buildings, and you know, you'll see a couple of them coming up next, but. It's very much about the indoor outdoor experience and weaving inside and outside together wherever one, one can. Yeah. That's really wonderful, Adele. And, and I, we have had cafes over the years and I, I'm sure that one will return when we're, we're able to, but um, just even knowing that that was part of the initial intent to, to, for people to gather and, um, and again, just reiterating the kind of multifunctionality of the building, I think opens it up to so many other Actually, possibilities. Actually, I think, I don't know if this ever happens, uh, Alex, but really in a way coming into the lobby and going up onto that garden space, you don't, shouldn't have to pay anything. <clears throat> going into the galleries is a different matter, all right? You know. Well, we happen to be free no matter where you go in the ICA. So that's a wonderful part of our, uh, our program. Um, you know, our tagline is free for all. And that has that kind of 
double intent to it, but it, we really do try to create as few barriers as possible. So I'm glad you bring that up because um, the architecture might be messaging that, but also our, our admission policies try to do the same. Yeah, it's great. So maybe this is a wonderful opportunity in the time that we have remaining to pull pull out from ICA because I think um, it, it's been wonderful getting to know you both and learning more about your your pro, your other projects and how uh, the work that you did at ICA or the design of ICA is really connected to your larger project as a whole as designers. Um, so I believe we have some images here. Uh, Na, maybe maybe you can you can bring us a little bit into your process and how. Um, you made that leap from the printed page into space because that is a really unique aspect of your work as a graphic designer. Uh, yeah, sure. The, um, these are like font composition and actually as a graphic designer, like I really like to uh, have some observation and then collect things. And I think many people are like into collections, but like, for me, that's very important aspect of making something. So like observation, uh, observing everyday life and then collecting things by the, the time. And then that also brings some kind of uh, connection with the memories. And then that's always engaged with the space and time. And I, I think this way of um, having some, um, this collections and doing something with that, that is always connect with uh, making some fictional moment, which is like, I'm very into these days. And I think uh, that's why I try to focus on many things in this kind of um, doing something with the collections. So this, uh, the found composition is very simple exercise that I uh, try to make a composition with a pound material. And then the stickers that was, as I mentioned, that was very much easy way to create uh, the thing instead of uh, um, uh, drawing or painting something. So for me, that's kind of a very basic material, material to uh, exercise or meditate or, you know, like uh, creating some material for other projects as well. And then, uh, uh, apart from that, in 2015, maybe if you see the next slide, then um, I get to work on my own uh, book called A Set. And that is sort of my monography in the same time, swatch book or sample book. I can call anything like that. Uh, but as a graphic designer, it's, it's sometimes if I'm asked to introduce my work, then I always have the feeling that uh, showing my portfolio is doesn't make clear sense because everything is like in the context of design. So I, in 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 case of commission work, so I try to find a way to showing my work in the same time. That's uh, like the sort of my creating the language of uh, my work. So um, in the book, uh, I sh I bring some the next slide. Um, this is a uh, like inside pages of set uh, book. Um, I was working with uh, another graphic designer because for me that it was quite interesting challenge to uh, working with another graphic designer because uh, dealing with my own work is quite difficult at the time. And then it's like, it's the collaboration itself was quite another kind of interesting process in the work itself to like looking at my work from other person's perspective. So then we decided to make this kind of swatch or sample book that only leaves some uh, colors and pattern of my previous book. And then that become another kind of uh, systematic uh, units of uh, my new creation. And then if we go to the next page, then this is the like uh, second version of the set series that I call, and it was after uh, after this uh, set book, and I tried to make kind of create some um, uh, different work from the from the publication. That means maybe I can use this um, book as kind of manuals or uh, sample book, then create something else out of that. So this is the the book cover images that presented in the wall space in uh, Daegu. 
uh, the one of the city in Korea. And then in the next uh, page, uh, I also try to create some um, installation out of this uh, this uh, sample book, and then that's for the rock festival. Festival, I need to create some like shelter for for the visitors, and then each shapes and um, some functional spaces was from the units of the book inside the book, and then that creates some functional spaces, and then. In the next slide, this is another sort of installation in the subway station in Korea. Uh, it's, it's, it could be uh, like simple installation for the wall of the subway station, but in the same time that I try to find some um, uh, ready exist st structure, which is kind of um, uh, the tire structure of the building as well. And then this can also define how to use these um, shapes and colors inside the space. So uh, from this um, uh, sample book, I try to apply this kind of language into different format and dimension or interface. And then in the last page, um, this is a extra work that I also want to show maybe. It's again quite connected with my series of work called set, but that's also like try to create another kind of tool to draw these uh, shapes into the space by visitors. And I create this uh, drawing set. This work is called drawing set. This um, installation for the children's museum last uh, two years ago. And that was perfect chance to try to make kind of another uh, tools to create um, these uh, shapes and patterns by the, the visitors. So this kind of, uh, uh, this book is evolving in different way. And I think uh, it's in the process still. And I, I really enjoy to like um, interact with the, uh, visitors as well in, in case of the, the public space. and. Of course, this ICA uh, installation is also uh, very much connected with this, the, the, that kind of exercise that interacting with, uh, with, the, with the visitors. And yeah, and then I'm very happy with that as well. So maybe we'll turn it over to Adele and maybe you can, you can tell us a little bit more about that connection of inside and outside that you were, you were talking about earlier. And I know you've, you've pulled together a few examples of works that uh, were maybe contemporaneous or uh, maybe in dialogue with the, the building at ICA. All right, I'm gonna start with um, the, um, actually in, 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 in Pennsylvania, I was asked to do a center for the arts um, at Reading, um, at Article Reading. And um, this was a, a campus and they wanted to add uh, they wanted to add an art gallery, a studio space, et cetera, to a complex that already existed. And I was asked if I'd like to have a collaborating artist. And I said, wow, that would be wonderful. And so we applied to the National Endowment for the Arts and we got money and um, I visited various studios and I chose Mary Miss uh, from New York who actually works a lot in landscape and kind of journeys through space and I just thought she would you know be terrific and then we actually got on very well and uh, I'd already started uh, designing this campus uh, but then I just pulled out a white sheet of paper one day and I said Mary let's just start all over again and she'd been working quite a, a bit with um, circles she was very interested in moving the the center of the circle and extending that and I'd never worked geometrically so I I thought well gosh okay let's just try this and um uh, just give me the next slide. You'll see what actually came out of it and then we can go back in again. Okay, so this is the campus and that is our building. And um, Mary was very much involved with uh, one part of it because I said, let's deal with the entry space where you come into the building and you have an experience that you just would never imagine having at all. And so Mary and I started working on, you can see there's a kind of a circular roof, um, which is kind of fun. Give me the next slide. Okay, here's one of my diagrams. So I said, Mary, let's let's just start with, that's the thing we're gonna to do together. The rest of it, you can be pretty banal, but this is actually 
the entry to the campus had never really had an entrance. So this was a way that was a gateway into the campus. And that, that quirky um, stair that you saw on the outside gave you a clue that you were going to go through into a place that was kind of different. And so Mary started working uh, very much uh, with the ground level and it was, it was almost like a timepiece. She dug into the earth and so on and so on. And I was then brought in an engineer from Tokyo, Nuria Imagawa, uh, to deal with the roof. So there we had the roof and the sky and the ground. And, and you can probably see from that diagram, you could actually walk around the space at the second level. So people could experience it in different ways as they entered, as they used the building. Uh, and it always came back to the circle. Now, it was interesting here, which um, was, a, was an odd little building that was from, God, you know, 100 years ago. It was sitting still on the campus and it was compositionally kind of out of order. But once you put a circle there, you know, you can just connect to anything. That's the thing about the circle. And we could begin to define different ways of routes that went through that entrance. And then you went up ramps and we went upstairs. And so it was compositionally the right thing to do. So that's really what Mary and I started with. Next. And talking about indoors and outdoors. Now, this crazy combination, of course, is like a timepiece because as the shadow moves, you know, the sun moves and you get the shadows on Mary's piece and the piece down below. And people would, you know, say, look, I'll meet you at noon, you know, in the spot, because there would be a conjunction of all these kind of you know, phenomena, if you will, that were kind of um, in juxtaposition became extremely interesting. And once you came into the space, you could also then go through on routes. And um, this is really important to me too. So next. Oh, this is, this is the sky piece. And you could see actually what he did was he, he moved a circle to be off center, which is really important, which is like compositionally what she was doing in the ground as we were going from the circle that was actually the entry piece and stepping up on the land. All right, so, you know, out of just a simple move of, of working sky, ground and circulation, you know, we could do something quite, quite, quite magical here. Um, next. Yes, so from here, there's a staircase that goes um, up towards what is an existing building, which is the student center. That's where people got food and things like that. And there was also a theater and we were creating a theater lobby. And um, so this whole idea of moving in space in a very conscious way, you'll see that this, the staircase actually goes indoor and outdoor. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, there you are. So actually the stairs literally are inside and outside and they go through this glass wall, which for me was really, really important. And when it gets into the inside, actually there's planting and there's planting on the outside. So, you know, there's, there's two versions of indoor outdoor here uh, crossing through this, this, this glass line. And um, I thought that it was really quite terrific. I've done that. It, it's more than once actually because it's of course it's hell to build but that's that's another story uh, but experientially it's 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 kind of it's it's magical thanks ah, okay now we're moving on to something entirely different and this is um you know now i actually showed her method of working and how she assembled things and then we referred to the diagram that i put made of the ica from the very beginning um, I have a process, a design process I call narrative mapping. And narrative mapping is I sit down and I brainstorm about all aspects of a problem. And then I try and make little vignettes and little diagrams to explain all of this. This was a, a process that I used for the um, uh, Arts Park in Los Angeles. I was working with um, other collaborators. And this is the story of how this whole thing evolved, but I could actually put it in this form. And when we actually presented it, we put it together in a kind of foldy book. So there were pieces, these images, and they, they could concertine it into this book of taking us through the design ideas through, through this sort of um, way in which I, I like to work. So um, this was, okay, and here we go. Now, this is actually what was called the Arts Park. And it's uh, something, a competition I, 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 I won. Mary Miss was part of this too, and um, Hodgson Fong. And, um, and we were asked to design, uh, a Ramada restaurant, uh, an amphitheater, a little museum. And we just started by looking at the history of this place, which I think is always interesting. And we discovered that in fact, it had been groves of trees, citrus trees actually. And so we kind of almost reenacted the process of this thing. You'll see this grove of trees and we're cutting through this and making it part of the landscape, part of our design actually. 
So the foyer, for example, to this theater is just a space where we took the trees away. Uh, and the trees were also the grid that you could park your cars under it and so on and so on. So um, anyway, we didn't want it just to be, um, you didn't want people to see the amphitheater immediately. So next slide. Ah. So we created a mound, a little hill. And you can see at the end there, there's a hole in this hill, right? And this would be uh, one way that you'd actually get through the hill and to the other side, uh, which is kind of very dramatic and mysterious. You know, it's kind of, a, it's, it's nice to create these illusions. So it's not just a direct thing. Next. Or you could actually go up a ramp on this thing to the other side and you could see there, you start to see the amphitheater going down to the lake. And um, so, you know, there's mystery and there's magic and there's a, the, these journeys, you know, which we, we like to do. And um, I mean, this is sort of like me being a sculptor, which I'm not really. Uh, and then next. And then actually got through to the lake and this is where we put the restaurant, the Ramada restaurant. And um, by the way, this is exactly what happened in the end. We won the competition and then the engineers said, oh my heavens, we can't have anybody doing anything in the lake, which they never told us at the beginning. And so this project never got built, but we, we got first place winning, you know. Anyway, there's a Ramada restaurant sitting on the edge of the lake. Next. All right, and these are the kind of diagrams I make. So this is actually what it would be like uh, sitting there you know, under these sort of waving canopies um, on the lake and um, you know, eating your, eating your food and actually looking at the lake and looking at the boats, which we decided we should have boats made by artists, you know, so you could rent a boat <laughs> designed by Alice A. Cock or, or Na Kim or whoever, right? <laughs> and float around in the lake. And then next, next slide. Ah, and then you can get a sense of where, where the amphitheater was sitting in the lake and the actual Ramada restaurant. And then there is a, there's a little piece of something floating, fearing to float in the lake. Next. And this actually was, uh, was a bar, a restaurant bar for the, the people who'd given most of the money to the lake, right? And you could actually go through a causeway. And at night, of course, that lantern, you know, was, was lit up and it was just, again, another piece of magic sitting in the lake. Right, so that's a little bit about the process. And the last one I'm gonna show you is um, another competition I won. And this is for um, a civic center in a little town called Paris. And we went to Paris and it's one of those places in the inland empires, they, they call it in, in California, nothing special. I mean, there, was, there wasn't a single building of any quality. And I thought, oh my God, how do you begin here when you've got nothing, you know? And, um, and this was a site plan. And then I started saying, well, there has to have been a history here somewhere, you know? And we went into the library and we started researching it out. And wow, we discovered that there were Indian tribes that actually lived there and carved in the rocks and left messages and they were sky watchers. And they, they marked the, the, you know, the solstices and things like that. Of course, they disappeared. This was a long time ago, but it was really a, a place where there was kind of agriculture was, was, was really doing very well rocks everywhere, rocky mountains. And I thought, gosh, maybe we could take something entirely different. Let's just talk about the, um, the context. How do you live in this kind of environment that's on the one hand too hot, uh, the sky is bright, 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 and everybody, you know, there's lots of ballooning in the sky because that's what people would do. They'd get up on hot air balloons, which are sort of, again, sky watching, you know, brought into a modern day. And so this is, um, this is a side plan and I won't bother you with the details, but what I started was next. This is all meditation on, on, on the environment, the time of day. And you know, civic centers always have to do with clocks, the time of day, like time going on, you know, it makes history, right? So you'll see again a circle in this case, but it also helped us geometrically put together all the buildings that somehow were off-centered because we had old buildings and new buildings. And um, so that was beginning the beginning of this thing, the idea of making it all about time and space and the environment. Uh, next, I can't see all this. Oh, convex and concave. You know, there was either the mountains or there were the hills and then there was rocky and then there was grassy. And it was trying to sort of talk a little bit about, about that. And you can see there is a staircase there and that is actually part of the clock. That's the nomen of the clock. So actually casting shadows on time of day, you could actually begin to measure time physically there. And that was our clock. Uh, next. And there you can see it actually. 
so you actually you could go up to the top and it was a little uh, it was a little uh, amphitheater up at the top so you could actually have performances at night and all this sort of thing so that was just the beginning of it so then i actually decided to create a series of courtyards that related to um and you'll see one is related to the sky the other one's related to the ground plane the other one's related to where the breezes come through so we could cool the air and the other one was actually where they had a jail and uh, we created a garden where where even the, the inmates could actually in, be safe and enjoy something that was really really good there too next okay and you could see here uh, there's something that's turning up that's just what we called our sky catcher and we made it's a kind of courtyard and it's mirrored on the inside and uh, you could bring when you're in there you could bring the sky down to the ground right and then you can begin to see that little staircase going up to the that the little theater on top of the when that was in fact on top of the uh, council chamber next again here are the diagrams so here we've got at the top is the sky catcher uh, and you could go in and that's a courtyard and you could, it's all mirrored okay so you can see the sky and you can see the balloons and absolutely everything in it and it also kind of the rain came in and made a pool at the bottom and the one down below it is called the ground ground it was about the ground it was about there on the disc in the middle we could actually display all the rocks and the sand which are fantastic things in different colors and when the wind blew uh, you could see at the top there's a little kind of disc uh, actually then it rotated this whole disc rotated and became a kaleidoscope and that's where you paid your bills and did all those horrible things so you could actually bring your grandchild and go ooh and ah you know <laughs> with you it was an experience and it was talking really about the earth and the sky and then the next one ah then I think at the top is, yes, this is the wind catcher. And this is the center of the police, by the way, it was hilarious because when we won the competition, they were going, oh, look what they've done. Oh, oh, my heavens. And the idea that there would be a pond of water down below. And so the breezes would come in and cross this thing. And on the roof, we put um, fragrant flowers. So if you could smell jasmine, you knew which direction the wind was coming from as compared to another one of these wonderful, wonderful flowering plants. And then down below was was the water garden, and that was actually where uh, we could actually make a shade garden and have water there and grow fabulous plants. And that was related to the jail. So this is just sort of the kind of um, it's kind of a, I like doing these phantasmagorical things, actually, to be honest. And it's all it's all about landscape and indoor and outdoors. You could tell, and and just you know having having some fun with it and and try, trying to put these ideas into some form that people can understand. And here's the final one. At the end, like that's all it is. You could see them lined up all these different courtyards. Yeah. So we won this, and then you know the mayor lost the race, and she didn't know, and then the organizer got fired. And, you know, and this is the way architectural <laughs> practices go. You know, you you win two, and and they never get built, and and some of them do. That's all. Yeah. But I think what that that uh, emphasizes Adela is, is the importance of maybe the drawing in your oh, work yes. and the model oh, yeah. because um, so much of architecture ends up being speculative just by the things that you just laid out, right? Um, and I I wish very much that we could experience these buildings because the way you describe them um, it's just so evocative and yeah uh, no, I mean this is this is you know I'm, I'm writing a book right now it's all be in there but you know oh, it's uh, good. yeah yeah. But you know, I think the point about the, the narrative texts is a way of actually number one designing, which is really important because you can engage the audience, whoever these people are. And if I won competitions like this, it's because I could clearly tell what it was that I was doing and why I was doing it, honestly. And uh, you know, and this is uh, something great. I realize actually I've done this my whole life. You know, it's just fundamental to the way I work, and it's it's a little unique actually. That's fun too. Well, thanks for allowing me to show this. Well, maybe in our we we're in our kind of final final stretch here, but in our remaining minutes, I wonder if we could maybe just return back to the to the ICA building and um, you know if there's any anything you'd like to ask of each other or um, maybe anything you'd like to reflect on in in terms of maybe learning to see things anew through this process. Um, well, I think honestly, you took you took a building that's kind of you know somewhat uh, stern, actually maybe in the campus setting, and you made it really joyful with all, all that text, you know, sort of abstract text that you put in there, and 
and the fact you were able to weave it through and do more than just the ramp, you know, it was somebody else I remember who did just the ramp. And you know, you wisely said, gosh, couldn't I, couldn't I do the whole thing? And they said, wow, really you want to do that? <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And then I, yeah, luckily it's, it's, yeah, it was really great pleasure to meet you through this project and especially all this conversation today. I mean, it's almost like magical that hearing about your process, it's narrative mapping, it's very attractive, but it's like it's seeing some utopian image through you. It's really amazing. So I think it, we also have some kind of connection from this uh, idea of outside and inside. And, oh, yes, for sure. Uh, the ICA put the title of this project as a outside in, which was quite, I really like the title as well for this series. And then I think that uh, tells a lot about like the project itself and then also my engagement of this project and then maybe your idea about the IC building itself. So I think this title is really perfect outside in. Actually, it was also interesting that in, in a way through, through graphics, in my case, I tell a story that then can become the building, right? So, you know, I'm designing the graphics, honestly, as a process of <clears throat> taking the, 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 the verbal, taking the word and trying to move it into the dimensional with an explanation, you know, and it's so, uh, so there is a kind of, there's another connection there, I think. Right, right. So I think it's also like, that also sometimes reminds me this, um, like how this somehow like a memory and collection is important in a way, personally, because uh, you're like the, this mapping, narrative mapping and storyboard is all about like human engagement and then I think it's also like letting people inside the building with your imagination. And I think that's very much uh, connected with how to deal with the memories, I think. And I really love it. Well, thanks. Thanks, Alex, for bringing us together. It's so nice to meet you now. Well, thank you both. I, again, this is really uh, just a, a a dream that we had to do this to bring you both together and so I want to thank you both for your generosity um, and it's just been so wonderful to to hear the two of you connect um, I hope in person for real soon um, and just thank you both uh, I, I learned a lot uh, and I, I certainly have a new appreciation of our building uh, through both of your practices so so thank you both well thank you great Thank you.